don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> it really wasn't that funny at the time. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to a good old fashioned YouTube story time. You see it in the title. I just thought, why not sit down and tell you about all the times I've almost died? Wouldn't that be fun? I have a weird history of choking. Like, I have had three very severe choking episodes and my family was all sitting by the fire the other night and it happened to come up and we talked through the three times I choked to the point of almost dying and I was like, you know what? I should tell my friends on the internet about that. Um, so here I am and ironically, I don't know if you guys can see it. Can I see it? If I stand up? Yes, yes. I have like a giant <laughs> mouth on my dress, which I was not planned. Oh, that's so funny. But I now think it's that? super funny because it's like literally a wide open mouth with a giant like <laughs> colorful tongue. With the lip coming out like... <laughs> yeah, like it's like... <laughs> So that's bizarre. I feel like that was meant to be, but it was like totally an accident. <laughs> totally I is. like I'd love to be like I'm so on it that I like purposefully picked oh, this. Oh, you got my lipstick on your tooth. It's gone. All part of the show. Let's break. <laughs> Open. Nope. Now the other tooth. You must have spread it. Okay, go the other way. <laughs> yeah, you're good now. And we're back. Okay. <laughs> get all the behind the scenes. Okay, so the first one took place when I was about four years old and the most recent one took place during pandemic lockdown, so like recently. The first one, I was four years old. We had just had Halloween. My dad loaded my brother and I into a dark green minivan. This is the 90s, keep in mind. We were allowed to pick one of our Halloween candies to eat. What did Molly pick? An orange lollipop. I remember this vividly, by the way. It's like one of my vivid childhood memories. All of my most vivid childhood memories are the traumatic ones. Isn't that great? My brain just really picks the good ones mm. to hold on tight to. <laughs> so I can remember being in our basement. We had this very small house and we were in this basement and it had this awful green carpet and my candy was in a drawer and I pulled out the drawer and I picked this orange lollipop just like a very basic orange with a stick like one of the flat lollies and were we going to go rent a movie is that what it was it was just you, you dad and Brady yeah and you we were going to we? rent a movie that's what I thought okay. yes so we were going to rent a movie and I was in like a car seat still like it wasn't, it's not like a baby car seat, obviously I was like four, but I was very small. Shocking, I'm still very small. Literally like a hundred pounds and four foot 11. So I'm very small, I always have been. I was always in the front row of class photos. And so I was in like, cause strapped in over my shoulders to this special seat. I've always been fully night blind and it was nighttime. So it was dark out. And I can, again, vividly remember it being pitch black and I can remember sitting in the back seat and I was yapping away to my father. Shocking, Molly talking a lot? I know, who could believe it? So I'm talking away and then all of a sudden I go silent and my dad is driving and he's like, Molly, by the way, if you grew up in my hometown, Oakville, Ontario, it was on Rebecca Street to give you guys a full visual, okay? I lived like on a street off of Rebecca Street at the time. So it was like pretty close to home. We drove all the way down our street, turned onto Rebecca. We're driving down Rebecca. My dad is like, Molly, cause I stopped yibbery abbering and he looks back and I'm just like, and the stick Moral is... of the story is never try and hide the fact that you're choking. I don't think I was trying to hide it. I just didn't know what to do. Actually, now that we're saying this, I have a very funny story as well about a date when I choked. This is a totally one I just forgot about until right now. So I'm holding the stick in my hand and the lollipop is nowhere to be seen. And my dad is like, oh my God. He pulls the car over to the side. Somebody's driveway is right there. He opens like the sliding door to the van, unbuckles me, like rips me out of the car seat, pulls me onto this, I can, I can remember like the pavement under my feet. And I think some man came like running out of his house or was like walking down the sidewalk and saw what was happening. And together the two of them were able to dislodge the lollipop from my throat, but please, moral of the story should actually be never let your kid eat a lollipop in a car. Okay, very dangerous. So that was very severe choking experience number one. Followed by just a few months later, or not even a few months, I think literally a few weeks later, my grandfather had just passed away. I wasn't yet diagnosed with RP, I was soon to be. I was at a restaurant, we went to Pizza Hut. Literally why, I don't know, because we never 
grew up really eating pizza. That was not like, we didn't have Friday night pizza night. Like we weren't a huge pizza family, of course, occasionally we'd have it, but like pizza was not our jam as a fam, okay? That was not our thing. So I don't jam know. as a fam. <laughs> Do I <laughs> lipstick on my teeth again? Now, no, no. I'm, now I'm paranoid. No, okay. okay. So that was not our thing. So I really like my brother when we were retelling the story by the fire. My brother was like, "Why the hell were we at Pizza Hut? Like it's just not our family's." place okay so anyways we are very much my family raised me on going to local mom and pop restaurants and so why we were at like this big chain who knows but we go to this big chain restaurant and we're sitting there and i insisted literally for no reason i insisted on being in one of the wooden high chairs why i do not know i was too old for this but my parents were like grieving the loss of my grandfather and i was heavily grieving the loss of my grandfather this is okay if you ever saw this story where i climbed into the coffin with a dead man that's the dead man's coffin i climbed into i was very attached to that man so i was really upset this is the first first death I had ever experienced in my life. So I insist on being put in this stupid high chair and like literally I was too big for it, but my parents were just like, God, we're not arguing right now. We're all emotional and upset. We're just here to get some good chicken wings. And so they stick me in the high chair. I'm at the end of the table. They give me a chicken wing and I'm like, and one of the bones gets lodged in my throat. I'm so it's so funny. I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> It really wasn't that funny at the time. And I'm sitting at the table at a bright restaurant, like they're watching me. So they immediately this time, they immediately see and know what just happened. And so they get up and they start, I can remember like hearing like people screaming <laughs> and I, I can remember them trying to pull me out of the seat, but I'm stuck. I am stuck in the damn wooden high chair. <laughs> it's funny now that I'm alive, okay? <laughs> I can imagine it not being funny at the time. And I, they're trying to pull me out of the high chair and I'm stuck. So then like some somebody comes running over and is like holding the chair down and they're trying to pull me out and they get me out to freedom. I don't know how they unlodged it, but it- would turn you upside down. Yes, okay, that-, that <laughs> they Back then, I don't know if this is still the recommendation, I'll leave some links below as to the current way to get things dislodged from children and adults. Because I know honestly, they've changed over time. I don't remember, yeah. But I know that at the time there was a thing about turning kids upside down. Yeah. So I feel like I do Turn remember yeah. something like that happening. Or maybe you just got released. But it could be. Once we got you out. Or I'm you could have sure. just done the, whatever, the high Her dad or whatever. was like a mess. Because I mean, his dad had a huge thing about choking. Really? Yeah. Grandy? Grandy had a big thing about choking. <laughs> that's the granddad that had just died. Just wow. died. What are Is the... that funny? Like, that's really I weird. I just realized the connection now, yeah. And he's the same grandfather that like pushed my parents to get me diagnosed when I was six months six months old. So very special man in my life. Maybe he did that to me. <laughs> I don't I died both. He was like, let me have some fun. I don't know. So that was um, the next incident. And then I went years. Molly successfully went years without choking. Um, until I was then on a date. Okay, so if you guys are like, oh geez, oh gee, oh gee, like literally from the time I had like a thousand followers on here, you might remember an ex-boyfriend I had. We were together for two and a half years, friends for years before that. We broke up and actually in my breakup video, I said that like we, it was like an open-ended breakup that like, you know, one day things might happen again. Well, I never told you guys, but it did. We, we reunited like probably eight months after our breakup. We started dating again. We never put a label on it, but we dated again for like maybe six more months. Ended terribly, ended way worse the second time than the first. Um, but uh, he used to cook for me all the time. He loved to cook. And so he um, ended up cooking me a dinner and I brought over a bottle of wine and he cooked me dinner and he made broccolini. I have never had broccolini in my life. Uh, at, at this point and so he makes broccolini which if you've ever seen broccolini Robin insert a nice little photo of broccolini right here um, I literally thought it was fake like the word broccolini just sounds fake to me but anyways it's like very long and skinny with these like fluffy little heads so I'm eating the broccolini and all of a sudden he just sees me sticking my hand like full hand and mouth and I'm like like pulling at my tongue like trying to get it up because the broccolini is like stuck in my throat. It's not going down. I think that really ended. That was the end of the relationship. <laughs> and honestly, that's what I remember. It was like, I picked you up and I was like, 
did not choke on his meal. It was actually like right around that time that it ended for real seas. And like I said, it ended not good that time, but we're actually, we're still very cordial. We're friends to this day. We still talk, it's fine. But it, it took a took a good year after that ending for me to get over that and like re-talk to him again. He immediately like realizes what's happening. Um, He did a lot of like medical training and stuff, gets up to help and he comes up and he was like, just for future reference, Molly, the universal sign for I'm choking is to go like this, like put your hands over your throat and like, you know, make the face. And uh, I was like, well, that's good to know. He's like, yeah, next time don't just stick your hand down your throat. That's not helpful. And I was like, okay, good to know. Um, and then the most recent choking experience I had, which frankly is the most traumatic for me, like the broccolini, fine. It came out pretty quick and easy. It was no big deal. Um, and the two choking experiences when I was younger, to me, they're just like funny. And I, yes, can vividly remember them, but like, I can't remember the feeling of choking, if that makes sense. So like, I don't care. I'll eat, I'll eat a lollipop, I'll eat a chicken wing. But this experience that I had during the like proper full on or original lockdown back in early days of like, it's probably around April, 2020 that this happened. That one has traumatized me, um, legitimately and has like, changed things for me. So this is this is the one that's the hardest for me um, and for my mom, I think, because it's the most fresh. Can I interrupt you by saying your nails are very pretty? <laughs> because we had a bit of a, a moment yesterday. So if you guys have seen all my recent nails and all my recent videos, I had like solid chunky gold glitter and I was obsessed with it because you guys know I can see glitter. And so I wanted to, I really need to get them redone. So I went I asked for rounded nails. He gave me square. I hate square nails. They're just really uncomfortable to me. They are now square, not rounded, which is what I went in with and what I always get. But they look really pretty. Thank you. I also asked for solid chunky, solid chunky silver glitter. And I have um, lavender nails with sparse glitter. And your toes are brown. I asked for dark gray. <laughs> It's fine. I mean, they were lovely. Like, they were very nice people. They were very um, nice. They were, so they were nice. really sweet and They're kind. Nice. So it's fine. Just not what I asked for. But that's okay. I now have lavender nails. It's a good thing I actually like the color lavender. Otherwise, this would be way worse. Um, but okay, so I was sitting in my bed, in my bedroom at this apartment. If you've seen this video, it was at this apartment. I was sitting on the side closer to the patio, like the, what is it called? The balcony, closer to the balcony. So further from my bedroom door. My mom was sitting on the couch in the living room. I'm sitting further from my bedroom door. I am just sitting in bed and I take a pill. Specifically, it was a Mastica pill. Mastica is fantastic if you get heartburn, by the way. Anyways, I took a Mastica and I had my it was a yellow water bottle swell with bumblebees all over it that my dad gave my mom and I matching ones years earlier. So I have my swell water bottle. I think I had like my laptop in my lap, like just watching something. I was sitting cross-legged in the bed. I swig the pill. And look, I think we all have those experiences where you take a pill and it gets stuck and it's like painful or super uncomfortable for like 10 minutes, but you can still breathe. You can still swallow. It's just kind of like really slowly going down. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, that yeah. sucks. This was not that, and I immediately knew it. It goes in and it is lodged. And I try to swallow more water and the water just comes back up because it is fully obstructing my airway. I stand up and I'm not panicked yet. I know this is really bad, but I am not in full panic mode yet. I just calmly stand up and I'm holding the water bottle and I start to walk and I'm like, you know, it's gonna go. Like I'm gonna start to go towards my mom just in case, but I'm sure. It's gonna, it's gonna be fine. Well, I have to walk all the way around my queen size bed and then down a little hallway, then out to the living room. And so by the time I'm on the other side of my bed and I've like walked around it, now I'm panicking. At this point, I'm like, okay, it's not at all moving. I'm still holding my water bottle, open water bottle in my hand and I like throw it onto the ground, like just like release it. And my mom hears like the clatter and I can feel the water spill onto my feet. And at that point I run out and I go like this, like my ex taught me, I'm a good student. And my mom is like, Molly! And she like runs over to me and she is screaming, screaming. And we're at the Did end of- Did you mention of that you hit your foot on the Oh my God, that really hurt. Yeah. That's how I knew, cause it was so loud. It was this huge bang. Well, I dropped the water bottle. Oh, was that it? Yeah, and, then I, your and then I kicked the door frame. Which really hurt you. <laughs> so my foot was really hurting. We're at the end of the hallway. So like we're at the end, not only at the end of the hallway, but in our own separate nook. So like my mom yelling in the living room 
if we were in the middle of the hallway, they might, like, other people might have been able to hear it walking by, but nobody ever walked by our place. And also, like, we didn't have close neighbors, so, like, nobody would be hearing. So she's screaming, and she's at the point where she's about to, like, just leave me and go bang on a door to call 911. Well, I wouldn't have left you. I would have taken you with me to a 911. <laughs> I wouldn't just leave you there to die. There would be very much time to dislodge this. Yes, you don't have much time, right? And so she's, like, wanting something to call 911. There's, like, she's screaming for that, but there's, like, literally nobody there to call 911. So I don't know why you're just screaming this. And she's, like, trying to do the highlight remover, which I don't think is even the way you're supposed to do it anymore, or it's maybe not the name anymore. I don't know. Again, I'll link info. But she, thank God, dislodges it, and I can remember it was a... And, like, it, it like, all the water that I had to drink with it and the pill all ugh, it's making me feel sick it all comes up like almost like you're throwing up comes up together and this like ungodly sound erupts from your throat like and like, like just air fills your lungs again like it's the craziest feeling oh it's making me stressed I feel like can't breathe <laughs> this one really still gets me and um we just both were like in shock and disbelief and like our Did hearts have a drink? were racing <laughs> probably we probably poured a strong a gin, gin and tonic <laughs> as we call them a nana pour my nana pour is the strongest gin so okay one and you're done irish and nana. i say yeah my irish nanny uh, the and, other, um, other nana too. well they're both irish so <laughs> Yeah, that was that was scary. And to be honest, since then, I have this very weird phobia. I cannot be around other people taking pills. If somebody else is taking a pill, I get super stressed and anxious and I will like leave the room or like turn my back and like, I can't, um, especially if it's Mastica. Like if somebody is taking a Mastica, the pill specifically that I choked on, I cannot be there. I get so, so, so stressed that they're gonna choke. Um, I can no longer take a Mastica, so what I do, because I still do take the, like, Mastica if I'm having heartburn issues, um, I will either order Mastica gum, or I will just open the pill, dump the powder onto my tongue, because Mastica powder doesn't actually dissolve in water, so you can't just mix it. I will pour it onto my tongue and just swallow it with water, although some of the powder, like, gets stuck in your throat and stuff, it's way more, way less anxiety inducing for me than taking a Mastica pill. I can no longer take capsules. So I've brought a bunch of my supplements to show you because I used to just take all my supplements no problem. Whole different ball game now. So this, I have no problem taking. This little round hard pill, no problem. I have ones that's even smaller than that. My zinc that I take daily, no problem. I can take my Renew Life probiotic. Even though it's a capsule pill, it's so teeny, I can take this, no problem. Anything bigger than this though, capsule-wise, I cannot take. My anxiety supplement that I told you guys I take in my I've Changed video, this is way too big. The Mastica is slightly bigger than this, but this is way too big for me to take. So what we do with this is we open it, this one does dissolve into liquid, so we put it into a juice, mix it up, and I drink it. Hard pills, yes, I take a lot of supplements. <laughs> Hard supplements like this one, I snap in half and I can take when it's snapped in half. And I take a lot in liquids. I take my B in liquids, which tastes horribly rancid, but again, doesn't induce anxiety. So I'd rather that. Uh, I take D in liquid form. Um, and then weirdly enough, gel capsules, completely fine. They can be huge honking pills, way bigger than the Mastica was, but I can take it no problem. Like my fish oils, we've all seen a fish oil. Those are huge beasts. Even though fish oil comes in liquid, I don't even bother because I can take a gel capsule, no problem. I know, it's very strange. There is like a, a mental block in my mind around capsule style pills that are any bigger than my probiotic that I take. Um, that's how it's left me. And I can't, like I said, can't be around other people taking pills and I get super stressed if people are taking Mastica specifically, um, but we cope. Uh, my brain loves to create big drama out of little trauma, okay? I don't know why, my brain is just like that. You guys know I live with PTSD and I feel like, I don't know if this is a thing or not. Maybe if you also live with PTSD, 
because my brain already holds on to trauma in weird ways and like stores it in places I don't like and then releases it in funny ways it just like now takes trauma and does the same thing it just like stores them in the same same way I don't know but uh, I'm just not good with pills now so thanks Mastica choking uh, issue in April of 2020 we love you appreciate you um, but the the good news is I've survived I'm here and please comment and let me know um, if you have choking problems too like is this just me who's choked this many times I have not met anybody else who's had such severe choking problems like so many times in their life very bizarre also I learned a swill swill pollowing hack pill swallowing hack that's really helped me as well I used to tilt my head back but I've since learned that actually closes your throat more so what I do now is it sounds like the opposite of what you should do but I lean my throat forward and I swallow my pill looking almost downward um, and that opens your throat and that has made a huge difference for me so if you're also anxious about swallowing pills or not very good at it don't do this I know leaning your head back is the instinct because you want to like create a straight line for it to go down leaning forward and swallowing opens your throat more and makes it for me personally way easier so I'm really glad I learned that hack because very helpful so maybe that'll help some of you I hope you guys enjoyed this video I don't know I had fun filming it walking down memory lane you know um, and until next time, you can click up here to see me go LA house hunting and come with me for the journey. Or you can click over here to see this Palm Springs house tour. Love you guys. Bye.